Hey guys, what's up? This is Nate here. It is Thursday, March 1st, and this week was all about Apple sending out invitations for their media event that will be taking place next Wednesday, March 7th. The event will be held in San Francisco, California, and will start at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, looking at the invitation itself, you can definitely see this is going to be centered around Apple's next generation iPad. Now, at this point, it's still unclear whether or not Apple is going to be uh, live streaming this event online on their website like they have done uh, for some of the events in the past, uh, but regardless, unfortunately, I will be in school during this time, but hopefully then later in the day I can give you guys a recap of what took place as well as my analysis on it. So taking a look at the invitation itself, you can uh, notice that it does um, seem to have some sort of an emphasis on the screen of the iPad itself. Uh, most likely that's due to the fact of that new 2048 by 1536 resolution that we will just, uh, see in the upcoming iPad 3. The other thing that a lot of people are noticing is the fact that the home button appears to be absent. Now we can definitely say that this iPad is in portrait uh, orientation just because the icons there in the dock are too close together to be in landscape orientation. Even if you fill the uh, dock up at the bottom with the maximum amount of icons, those icons will not be that close together unless it is in portrait. Uh, also, if you take a look at where the bubbles are aligned on the wallpaper itself, those bubbles will only line up with those icons on the dock like that in portrait orientation. The other thing that you could say is maybe Apple uh, flipped the iPad around so that the um, home button is facing the other way and it's not in the shot, but then we don't see an, an area for the uh, front facing camera on the device itself. So it really, there only seems to be two options, either A, Apple decided to omit the home button in the next generation iPad, or B, they just decided to Photoshop it uh, out of the photo in order to uh, really put the emphasis on the screen itself. Uh, but Apple could remove the home button if they wanted to in iOS 5. There is support for multi-touch gestures, which really uh, replace the functionality of the home button itself, so it's not really required anymore. I'm just not so sure Apple wants to do it yet at this point. A lot of people are used to seeing that home button there, and if it does become absent, and for someone who's never used an iOS device before, it may add a little bit of a learning curve to the iOS experience. Also this week, some more front-facing panels of uh, iPad, supposed iPad 3 parts have made their way online, and it still shows that the uh, home button is intact. So I still think there's a good chance we will see it on the iPad 3. So what else may be coming at this event? Well, rumors are saying that we will see a refreshed Apple TV. Now this isn't going to be uh, the Apple TV that actually features a display within it. This is just going to be a refresh to the $99 uh, box that they currently sell. So what may be coming in this? Well, it should get an upgraded uh, processor inside that should be able to support 1080p video streaming. It may receive Siri support as well as uh, support for adding some applications on the Apple TV, which would definitely be cool to see. So now let's talk about the availability of the iPad itself. Um, some Apple stores were originally slated to be opening around March 18th uh, that Apple was just uh, doing a grand opening of. Those dates for some of those stores have now been pushed back to the 16th, which is leading Mac rumors to believe that the iPad 3 may be sold on the 16th to coincide with the opening of those stores. So that would be a little bit after the announcement of the device itself, which is definitely logical. So if you guys are interested in getting an iPad 3 as soon as as possible, you're definitely going to want to make sure you're either in line on launch day, or if they do online pre-orders, you pre-order it as soon as possible. Last year with the iPad 2 launch, within uh, a few hours after its initial pre-order launch, this device was already uh, beginning to ship in four to five weeks. Um, so the iPad 3 expect even more demand, and according to reports today, there may be some shortages of the retina display, which could make shipping times even longer. So if you're planning on getting an iPad 3 and want it as soon as possible, just make sure you're on top of things on launch day. Next up, I'll talk about the state of the Mac Pro. So as I've stated in previous videos, Apple has not refreshed this product since 2010, so it's definitely due for a refresh at this point, but reports are still wondering whether or not Apple really wants to refresh this product or just continue it because it may not be that uh, profitable of a product for them. Uh, but reports this week are saying that Intel server Sandy Bridge E chip is set to debut next week, and this chip would definitely be qualified to be integrated in the Mac Pro. So I'm assuming that if we see a refresh of the Mac Pro, it'll happen very soon uh, to coincide with the launch of this chip. If not, uh, 
the state of the MacBook Pro is, uh, the Mac Pro, excuse me, is definitely questionable. So to wrap up Thursday Thoughts today, I'll talk about the throttling situation that's currently going on with AT&T. So in past Thursday Thoughts videos, I've talked about how some users were being throttled on AT&T's network with an unlimited data plan after only about one and a half, two gigabytes of usage, which really infuriated users because they could pay the same price for AT&T's three gigabyte plan and receive full speed data. So uh, this week, a man was successful in suing AT&T were being throttled on an unlimited data plan and he was able to receive a very large amount of money. So um, AT&T realizing that a lot of people could fight back on them against the uh, throttling, today they announced that they were now throttle people after three gigabytes of data usage. So if you're on an unlimited data plan, there's, there's a chance that you could be throttled after using three gigabytes of data. And it is technically fair because you are paying that same $30 price as someone who's actually purchasing uh, three gigabytes on a uh, non-unlimited to data plan. Um, but for me, I've already gone over that three gigabytes this month. I have not been throttled. And that's simply due to the fact that the area I live in, the spectrum is not constrained. So uh, I plan on sticking with AT&T on my current unlimited data plan. And I'm looking forward to keeping that unlimited data plan when I get um, an iPhone with 4G LTE compatibility. Hopefully that will be coming this year. And AT&T, if you're on a, um, one of their unlimited 4G LTE plans, will not throttle you until after five gigabytes of data. So that'll be great. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Please like it, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.